Hello everyone, this is Pastor Larry Dentler from Bermudian Church of the Brethren, and it's good to see you on Sunday, September 6, 2020, uh, first Sunday in September and Labor Day weekend. Uh, it is so good to uh, uh, be with you and glad that you can be with us. Uh, I've been quite aware of folks from a lot of different places when, uh, who are watching us online. When, uh, when I was a little boy and used to watch Romper Room from our local channel, the lady would hold up a mirror with no face in it and hold it towards the camper. Some of you remember towards the camera say, Romper, Stomper, Domper, Do, Tell Me, Tell Me, Tell Me, True, Who's Listening Today? And then she'd pretend to see faces out there. And, uh, I can, I can kind of do that. I can imagine what she felt like because I, I see some of our own church family watching today and it's good to see you we sure miss you and i uh, hope you're doing well and staying safe and see some of our good friends from florida down where my brother and sister-in-law live uh, thank you for joining us we hope every everyone's well there i, I see some friends from texas uh, and i see some friends from indiana and i see some friends from chicago uh, we're glad that you're with us today and uh, hope that you will be blessed as we worship together and that you'll have some time this Labor Day weekend to reflect on God's goodness uh, for the work you have uh, or maybe if you're retired for the work you were able to do throughout a lifetime that's enabled you to get to this place. Uh, we pray for those who have lost jobs and those businesses that are struggling because of the pandemic. Uh, we remember that God gives us the strength the abilities, the talents, and uh, we're very thankful. Reminder, this week at 9 o'clock on Wednesday, uh, our sister's Bible study will begin meeting again for the fall. They'll be meeting in the gathering place, picking up in the same book you had studied last spring uh, with Sister Louise. And so, sisters of the church, we'd love to have you join us. That's Wednesday at 9 in the gathering place. We'll remind you again uh, to make sure you have it on your calendar, our Fall Love Feast on Sunday, October 4th. Uh, we're going to be doing some things to, uh, some adjustments to our normal patterns to make things a little more safe. But uh, all that we love about Love Feast will be part of that. In the morning, we will have our service of examination, and we will do that uh, by uh, online and in, in person. And in the evening, we'll gather in the gathering place for the Love Feast. If you would like to join us, uh, we would like you to register ahead so we know how many to set up for. We have no idea. Uh, so if you call the office at 717-292-1861 and let us know if you're coming to Love Feast on October 4th, that would be great. Also, I want you to have on your calendar and be looking ahead and be praying for our fall revival, October 18 to 21, uh, with Brother Roger Myers, Pastor Brant's Church of Brethren on the prophetic book of Daniel in the Old Testament. I'm so excited about this. Uh, Brother Roger is a good friend and a good conservative Bible teacher, and I look forward to his messages on the book of Daniel. Very, very appropriate for today. Uh, we will be offering that face-to-face uh, -face each of those evenings at 7 o'clock. And that will also be available online. Um, we'll remind you again that we would like to begin to offer some children's ministry, a Sunday school class, if you will, that would happen during the sermon time on Sunday mornings, just as a next step back for our families with children. And so we're looking for uh, folks that would be willing to help with that. Uh, if you could help, if you'd be willing to give one Sunday a month or one Sunday a quarter, whatever you feel comfortable uh, we'd love for you to come. Uh, the plan is to bring them back over to from the gathering place into Shepherd's Hall. Uh, that has, as you know, hard floors, hard surfaces that we can do the same special cleaning we're doing in the gathering place. So if you could help with the children, I think this is so important. And I'd really like to see this ministry start rolling again. Uh, if you could help with the children at whatever level you would be willing uh, give us a call again at the church office and let us know about that. When you get your newsletter this week, you're going to see nominations for leadership for next year. Uh, normally, you remember about August, we do a paper that we give you uh, during these days when we're 
trying not to do a lot of that. Uh, we've put the list of the open positions in the, in the newsletter that will be coming, and we're asking you to call the church office again. Ashley's going to be busy with all these phone calls, isn't she? Uh, we're asking you to call the office with your nominations. Please take this seriously. It's very important, and we have a number of offices that will be open for 2021, and uh, your participation in this is very important. So watch for that in, in the newsletter. Our September mission offering for the month is uh, split again, 50-50, between Pastor Gilbert Romero and Bittersweet Ministries. That's a wonderful ministry down into uh, Mexico, especially in the Tijuana landfill area. And uh, a number of us have visited and worked with Pastor Gilbert. He's a good friend of our congregation. I was talking to him recently. He said that in Mexico, much like here in the United States, a lot of the children's learning is needing to be done online now. And the children that he cares for and provides for are these landfill families. One of the things that Gilbert has always done is to get uniforms. In Mexico, you have to wear uniforms to school, and the families have to su supply that themselves. So the uniforms and the school supplies. But now they need a, a little tablet computer if they're going to be able to keep up with their studies. So he's raising some money to help buy some simple tablet computers for the children there in Mexico. And so the half of our September mission offering that goes to Gilbert is going to go towards those um, those tablet computers for the landfill children in, in Mexico. Uh, the other half of our September mission offering is for Day 7 Ministries, wonderful uh, Christian Anabaptist-based uh, counseling ministry for persons struggling with, with any kind of sexual problems, persons with un, unwanted same-sex attraction, folks with family members who have come out as homosexual, uh, folks struggling with pornography, uh, couples that have dealt with infidelity. Um, this is an important ministry. I always like to say we need to put our money where our mouths is. We, we call for and teach for morality and uh, good values, and uh, we need to be providing the help when it's available. So remember that as you send in your offerings. Thank you so much for how faithful you've been. We are in good shape, and your offerings have been steady coming in. Uh, but as you think about offerings, remember these two. Very important. Uh, the mission offering for September will be split each way. Today we continue our study of Psalm 119 that uh, teaches us all about God's Word. And today, you know, I've said to you that uh, there are some of these verses that come out of Psalm 119 that are, are very, very popular. The kind you want to write in your heart, the kind that are well known. And here's probably the most popular uh, from verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we're going to be thinking about the light that Christ brings through his word. Uh, so let's sing two songs. Let's sing uh, an old brethren hymn, the, the light of the world is Jesus. And then we're going to sing a little Sunday school song that if you're old like me, you probably remember from Sunday school, Jesus bids us shine. Uh, Let's sing and, and worship together. Again, it's good that you're with us. Yeah, I said, <laughs> I announced the wrong hymn, didn't I? Lo, a gleam from yonder heaven uh, is the wonderful brethren hymn that talks about that light. Now that I got you all confused, let's sing it. Lo, a gleam from yonder heaven breaks upon our starless night. Like a kindly hand it beckons, walk in me, I am the light. Jesus light, serene, eternal, glorious sun of righteousness. Morning star of all the ages, with thy beams our spirits bless. When we're tossed on troubled waters, on temptations ocean-wide, like a silver flood descending, he our souls will safely guide. Jesus light, serene, eternal, glorious sun of righteousness, Morning star of all the ages, with thy beams our spirits bless. 
Out of sin and out of weakness, this fair light still beckons on. Through the valley of the shadows to his own resplendent dawn. Jesus light, serene, eternal, glorious Son of righteousness. Morning star of all the ages, with thy beams our spirits bless. Do you remember the little Sunday school song, Jesus Bids Us Shine? These are some good, simple words that a child might sing in Sunday school, but good words uh, as we think about how Jesus calls us to be light in an often dark world. Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this world is darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. My grandson Jax likes to sing that one with me. Uh, there's more than just the first verse. Jesus bids us shine first of all for him. Well, he sees and knows it if our lights are dim. He looks down from heaven to see us shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Thank you, everybody. Let's come to prayer time. And uh, we're going to do our sharing. And then we're going to look at a, a video from the Skit Guys. It's a wonderful prayer for this Labor Day weekend. Uh, put some pictures together of all kinds of work we do. And we want to say thank you to you for the work you do. Maybe, maybe you're on the farm. Maybe you're in the office. Maybe you're in the factory. Maybe you're in the shop. Thank you for the good work that you do. Um, maybe you're taking care of people in the medical profession or waiting on us in the stores these days. Maybe you're, maybe you're teaching your students from home or maybe you're a teacher in the classroom. Maybe you're hanging the clothes on the line or canning those uh, good crops now during canning season to share with your family later. Thank you for the work you do. And we thank the Lord for giving us the, the gifts and the talents and the abilities uh, to do good work for him. Let's think a little bit about some updates. We continue to pray for back to school time. Our, our schools have been starting back at different times and uh, some, are, some are in school and some are home and some are doing a hybrid kind of thing. We continue to pray for you, those in the schools, our teachers, our school officials, our helpers, our bus drivers, and those of you uh, parents helping from home uh, with the virtual learning, or those of you who are homeschoolers, thank you so much. Our love and prayers, no matter where you're at in this process, are sure with you. Gloria Gerber had asked us to pray for her friend Barbara this week. Uh, they lost Barbara's husband, Claire, passed away. They also asked uh, Jerry and Gloria to pray for their daughter, Susan, who's been on a prayer list a lot. She has a lot of health issues. She and uh, her husband, Vance, are moving to Colorado, and we want to hold them in prayer for the move and for Susan's health issues. We continue to pray for Sister Louise. She's doing good following her vein surgery. Donna Shive continuing what's been a slow process of recovery from her eye uh, infection. Uh, Tammy Breitner had asked our prayers for a uh, Co wife of a co-worker, Shirley, uh, she passed away uh, very peacefully at home, and so we hold that family in prayer. Sharon Stepp has been keeping us up to date with these two sweet little twin girls, Bria and Briella, uh, born on the 26th at just uh, three pounds each. They're still in the hospital. Mother Amy is home, but uh, they're, they're doing well. Jeff Mail continuing his recovery from his knee surgery home from uh, rehab now. Uh, we pray Jeff will continue to do well. Uh, praying with Kim Shear for a number of folks. And the, Jerry with cancer. Ron who had knee surgery. Janine who has cancer. Kim's father has colon cancer. Uh, Brother-in-law Tim who had emergency surgery at Hershey Medical Center. Uh, let's keep all those family members and keep uh, Rick and Kim in prayer. We also remember their son Jacob uh, is who's in training down in 
Texas expected to go here during September for a year-long deployment uh, to Iraq. Uh, we continue to pray for Marion Price and for Wilmer. This has been so hard, and it happened so just unfolded kind of quickly. Marion diagnosed with a rapidly progressing vascular dementia. She's at the bridges of Bent Creek and Mechanicsburg. Uh, Wilmer has not been able to go in, and so let's hold them in prayer. Uh, always on the other side of the camera is, br camera is Brother Mike France, and his mother Janet continues in our prayers and her treatments for cancer. Mike and Sandy Neff give us another good update on Luther Reinhardt. Uh, who's in Texas but is being discharged now from the hospital uh, and going back to his apartment in College Station, Texas. He'll, he'll have to return to the hospital there, MD Anderson, in a month for follow-ups. Mother Becky uh, plans to return back to Dover now after three long months out there in Texas. Luther's going to be uh, in isolated quarantine because of his very compromised immune system because of this uh, stem cell transplant. But he's able to work from home for Texas A&M University, so that's good. We have a new address for them. If you, Those of you who may have been sending cards, encouragement, uh, and if you'd like that, you can let us know uh, in the office, or we'll get that out in next week's Wednesday's Word. Now, as we move to prayer, let's, uh, let's first share this prayer for the goodness of the work that God has given us all to do. God, the earth, the moon, the sun, the stars, the oceans, the mountains, the trees that grow beside the waters, the animals that come to the stream to drink. It's all your work. You have created it. You gave us the sun which marks the days and the moon that marks the months. It all fits together like the workings of a clock. Then you gave us the ability to care for it all. You gave us the chance to care for each other. There is so much work to do, God. Help us to remember we do the work for you. If we cook, let us cook as though your son will be a guest at the table. If we paint, let us paint as though the picture will hang in your house. If we clean, let us clean as if your angels are coming to our home to dance. We will keep you in mind, God, in all things, in all we do. When we labor and when we rest, you created and you took a break. We will take this day and stop. We will breathe. We will appreciate the gifts you have given us. Our hands, our feet, our minds, our hearts. We will look around and see our lives as a gift. We will be grateful for the jobs we have. We will pray for those who cannot find work. We will reach out a hand to help those who cannot help themselves. We will be grateful for this day, this moment set aside to say thank you to the one who began a good work and continues that work in us. Amen. Let's uh, continue and pray. Lord, we do thank you for the good work that you have done in us and for the good work that you enable us to do. Lord, in our church family and in this viewing family, we have persons with so many gifts, talents, and abilities in so many different uh, fields of work. We have our farm families who work hard every day, Lord. Be with them. and We have our construction workers uh, who work so hard. We have those who work on our automobiles, and boy, we're thankful for them to keep us on the road. Our medical people, our store people, our office people, our factory people, Lord, thank you uh, for all of them and, and the work that they do. And we would not forget those who work from home, 
who now are busy canning those uh, vegetables and fruits that we will so enjoy in the midst of the winter. For those who wash our clothes and clean our homes and help the children to learn, thank you, Lord, for the work we do and that you have helped us to work. Lord, during this uh, pandemic, there have been those who have lost their jobs, those who have taken a hit at, in the paycheck, those who have struggled, those who run their own businesses that maybe have had to close or work more limited. Lord, please be with them. Help everybody to find the work that they can do and that they want to do and to use the gifts that you've given them to do. Lord, your word says that in all we do, we should do it as though to you. And so with the farmer and with the construction worker and with the nurse and with the clerk and with the office worker and the factory worker and the mechanic and the teacher and the bus driver and the home canner and the home clothes washer, <laughs> Lord, be with us all in the work that we do. And we'll give you all the honor, praise, and glory uh, for your worthy as we work. And we'll take this day uh, tomorrow, Lord, to uh, enjoy the, uh, the marking the end of the summer and to remember how good you are to us. So bless the holiday. Lord, we continue to pray for all our children, school workers, bus drivers, teachers, administrators, Students, parents, during this back-to-school time, it's been difficult. Please uh, help it to go well. Help our children to learn and be safe. We pray with uh, Jerry and Gloria for this family, the Zins that have lost a loved one, and for Susan and Vance as they travel to make a new home and have new work there. Uh, bless and be with them. For some recovering, for Louise and, and Donna and for Jeff, uh, please, please be with them. Thank you for healing. Continue to be with them. And, and for those who struggle, uh, we think of the relatives of Kim dealing with cancer, for Mike's mom dealing with cancer. Uh, we think of these two little babies who have been on our prayer list, Bria and Briella, and their family so anxious to be able to have them home. Bless those dear little ones and those caring for them. We continue to pray for Wilmer and Marion. Oh, hold our dear Marion close to you, Lord. May somehow in the midst of the fog of the dementia, may she know how much Wilmer cares for her and how much we love her and miss her. But most of all, that you're with her, holding her, loving her. And we pray for those caring for her. We pray for our brother Jacob. We miss him. And uh, we know that soon he'll be making his way far away to that strange land uh, to be uh, a protector there, a, a warrior there, and keep he and his fellow soldiers safe. Uh, may they bring peace and safety uh, in that very troubled land. We pray for all those who struggle with cancer or chronic illness. We pray for all those who walk the journey, uh, like Luther out in Texas, like Mike's mom. We pray for all those who need to know that you're near, that you care, that you love. We pray for the families in our hearts who have lost loved ones recently. That you'd be with them not just in the days immediately following a loss, but in the weeks and the months and the years that go on when that empty spot is still felt. Lord, we'll give you again all the honor, the praise, the glory for your worthy. Thankful for this opportunity to be together. Thankful for those viewing from Dover and East Berlin and Abbottstown and York. Thankful for those listening from Florida and Texas and Virginia and Indiana and Illinois. 
thankful for all that it means to be your church near and far. And we'll bring all these prayers and offer them up to you, Lord, in the name, the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, as we remember the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It was quite a number of years ago, the young adult class from Mechanicsburg Church of the Brethren that was called Serenus, of which Kathy and I were a part, had planned uh, an outing on a beautiful fall Sunday afternoon to go splunking or caving up in the Newville area. We started our adventure. Now we had to crawl on our bellies. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. We had to crawl on our bellies through a corrugated drain tube that ran the whole way under all four lanes of 81 to get to the cave on the other side. Now this was not for those who suffer from claustrophobia. <laughs> and it was not for the faint of heart. And it was muddy and wet. Crawling through that tube, the whole way under all four lanes of 81 in the centerpiece was a long, long crawl on your belly. In fact, not long after the day we did it, a young man lost his life in that corrugated tube when it caught fire while he was in the middle of it. I'm not even sure if this access into the cave up there is even still accessible today. But once you got into the caves on the other side of Route 81, it was truly amazing. We squeezed through tiny openings, and I mean squeezed. Not sure I would fit today. And then we entered into this large underground room. At one point, our guide asked us to turn off our flashlights. And I remember him saying, most people have never experienced complete and absolute darkness. Well, here it is. And we all turned off our lights. Whew. It did give me a new understanding of dark. The person seated right next to you, shoulder to shoulder, you were bumping against them, but you couldn't see them at all. You could put your hand right in front of your face. And you couldn't see it at all. And then he lit one small candle. And suddenly, you could see into every corner of that large cavern. And I could see all the faces of my dear brothers and sisters from my Sunday school class. It truly was an amazing experience, and, and I'm glad I did it once. <laughs> As I said, I've reminded you along the way that throughout our study of Psalm 119, there are some power verses that are good ones to write on our hearts and memorize, and some that have become very famous, and, and this section today indeed begins with that beloved verse 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you're a beach person, like I am, you probably enjoy the image of a lighthouse. These majestic, kind of mysterious structures dot the coast to light the way during storms for ships at sea. There's a great old story, and maybe you've, maybe you've heard it before. A big freighter was steaming towards the harbor. 
The storm outside the cabin raged and blew, and the, the captain couldn't see a thing, but he trusted his instincts and his instruments. He wanted to get the big ship into the harbor. Then a crackling voice came on the radio. Freighter, please adjust your heading 12 degrees port. The captain radioed back. This is the freighter Brantley 54. We will not be changing course. We are headed into the harbor. Please adjust your course. The radio crackled again. Brantley 54, adjust course now. 12 degrees to port. The captain bristled. He keyed the radio. I don't know who you think you are. This is Captain James F. Smith of the Brantley Freight Lines, piloting freighter Brantley 54. We do not change course for an inferior vessel. Adjust your course as necessary. Captain Smith, out. There was a long pause, and then the radio crackled again. Uh, this is Bob from the lighthouse. Unless you want to crash into the rocks at the opening of the harbor, you will need to adjust your course 12 degrees to the port. Captain, very soon you'll be able to see my light. Just follow me and I will guide you safely in. Captain Smith didn't say a word, but followed Bob's directions and followed the light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There's a lot of darkness gathering around us in the time we're living in. And our psalm writer today reminds us that the light of God's word will always guide us safely. Pastor Tim Davis, on his study notes on Psalm 119, writes, God's word is our light in a dark world. It is a beacon of light in spiritual darkness, showing us the way home. Now, in our study, we're to the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, uh, Nun, uh, which is roughly equivalent to our letter N. So let's read the section that begins with that letter. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 119, and we're going to read verse 105 through 112. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. I have suffered much. Renew my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. My heart is set on keeping your decrees to the very end. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading and our hearing of his precious word. Amen. Pray with me. Lord, it's always a pleasure, always a blessing, always a wonder to study your word. And we thank you for this psalm, which we've been studying. It's such great truth for us. And now today for this section. And Lord, we ask that you would come by the power of your Holy Spirit to be our teacher today. Lord, open hearts and minds on the other side of this camera, in bedrooms and living rooms, on computers and TV screens and cell phones. Lord, be our teacher as we study together. 
Allow this poor messenger, Lord, to be way in the background, but your perfect truth to be front and center and written upon our hearts is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We've reminded ourselves each week as we go through this study of some of the basics about Psalm 119. It's the longest chapter in the Bible. It's about right at the center of the Bible as though the Lord's looking forward uh, to the New Testament and back to the Old Testament and saying, this is my word. It's an acrostic, you'll remember, uh, of the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 stanzas, stanzas eight verses in each stanza. And... Uh, each one of those stanzas begins with one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, and every sentence in that stanza begins with that same letter. That all gets lost in English. Hebrew is so different. Uh, so it all gets lost to us. Some of your Bibles will have the Hebrew letter at the beginning of each stanza just to kind of mark that. And the whole book, all 176 verses, is entirely about God's Word and uses eight different words to speak of God's word, the Bible. And in NIV, those eight words are law, statute, precept, command, decree, word, way, promise. And we've said, remember, you don't need to worry as we read to it and you hear precept or statute or decree or way. You don't need to try to figure out, well, what's... What's the writer talking about? What's God mean at that point? Because these are all just different words to speak of God's word, the Bible. It's a, uh, you know, the Psalms are hymns, they're poetry. These are just eight different ways to speak about it. Um, we said as this came to fruition late in 2019, and as we began, opened the door to it at the beginning of 2020, uh, that today more than ever, it's critical that each believer have absolute clarity, 2020 vision, if you will, about what the Bible is. And if that was true at the end of 2019, if that was true at the beginning of 2020, that is for sure uh, true right now. In this beautiful stanza, our writer reminds us of four truths about what God's word means to us. He says to us, God's word is. And he begins by saying, God's word is clarity. And there's our beautiful verse. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word provides clarity for every question you might have in every season of life. A lamp shines for us in the night to help us see, like the lighthouse. A light shines in the day, like the sunshine, to make things clear for us. The Bible shows us the way for every season of life. There's nothing that we can face, no decision we must make, no belief that we need to clarify that God's word won't shine truth for us. Before the Protestant Reformation, Roman Catholicism said that the average person should not own or read the Bible, that it was much too hard for the common person to understand. Let me teach you a big word. It's a word you can impress your friends with. <laughs> the Protestant Reformation understanding of perspicuity of the Bible. Now here's how we define and understand that word. The word perspicuity means clarity. The doctrine of the perspicuity, clarity of the scripture, is one of the basic tenets of Protestant evangelicalism regarding the Bible. In short, the doctrine of Perspicuity means that the central message of the Bible is clear and understandable and that the Bible itself can be properly interpreted in a normal, literal sense. Does this mean we don't need teachers? Does this mean we don't need study? Of course not. Uh, you can study the Bible a whole lifetime. I have and continue to mine treasure from that treasure mine. But the basic truth of the Bible is simple. 
and clear that uh, even a child can, can understand it. Two of our most trusted conservative Bible teachers in the Church of the Brethren explain this, and I like the way each of them explains this. Brother Jim Meyer, writing a little pamphlet that he wrote called Rules Used for Interpreting the Bible, says, I try to let the Bible speak plainly to me just as it reads. That's always the best way to approach the Bible. What does it plainly say? Then if we need to look at context, then if we need to look at historical understanding, then if we need to compare other scriptures on that same subject, we can do that. But we begin by letting it speak plainly to us. Or I really like the way Brother Harold Martin uh, said it to us. If the plain sense match, makes sense, what's the sense of looking for another sense? <laughs> I like that. If the plain sense makes sense, what's the sense of looking for another sense? We have those today in the world and in the church who think they really know better than what the Bible really says. Here's what I want you to take home. God's word doesn't obscure the truth. God's word clarifies God's truth. The Apostle Peter wrote, we also have the message of the prophets. This message can be trusted completely. You must pay attention to it. The message is like a light shining in a dark place. It will shine until the day Jesus comes. Then the morning star will rise in your hearts. Next, our writer says that God's word is decision. Listen to verses uh, 106 and then 112. I have made a promise to follow your laws because they are right. I have decided to obey your orders to the very end. You see, it requires a settled decision by each individual, by each couple, by each family, by each church family or congregation, and by each denomination. I, we, accept the absolute authority of God's word. And I believe that this gets a little harder at each level. As an individual, we must own this and trust this in our heart. I accept. It's settled for me that God's word is the absolute authority in my life. But then as a couple, there are two of us. And we have to agree on this. I would hope young couples before marriage would come to agreement on this. It'll make your marriage uh, go a lot easier throughout the years. If you come together and agree, settled, that God's word is the absolute authority for us as a couple than as a family. You as parents are responsible to train your children that they might one day come on their own decision to decide that God's word is the absolute authority. But while they're younger, you help by teaching them, by showing them how much you love God's word and how you're committed to following it. And then for a church family, even harder because we're larger. There are more of us. We have differences of opinion. But if a church family is going to thrive, if it's going to make a difference, if it's going to be faithful to the Lord, the church family must come to a settled decision that we accept the absolute authority of God's word. If difficult times come, if decision-making comes, we will base that on God's word. And then as a denomination, you see it's even a larger group of people. But if a denomination is going to be faithful, it must be settled that God's word is the absolute authority. 
You must decide as an individual, as a couple, as a family, as a church, as a denomination. You must decide that you are going to trust and obey God's word even when it is hard, even when it doesn't seem clear, even if it goes against the cultural trend, even if it should become declared illegal. <coughs> you know the story of Nehemiah. How after years of Israel being in exile, the majority of the people were taken to other places. Nehemiah came back to the Holy Land and led those still living in Israel to rebuild the temple and to begin to serve God again. Part of that rebuilding was not just the walls of Jerusalem and not just the temple, but was to make a renewed decision to trust and obey God's word. Here's how it's recorded in Nehemiah 10. All the men joined the nobles of their people. They made a firm agreement. They made a promise and said they would be cursed if they didn't keep it. They promised to follow the law of God. It had been given through Moses, the servant of God. They promised to obey carefully all the commands, the rules, the law, and the laws of God, our Lord. Third, our psalm writer says God's word is sufficient. Verses 107 to 110 read, I have suffered much. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. God's word is sufficient, even when it's not easy. Sometimes the journey of our life gets hard, doesn't it? Sometimes living obediently for Christ is hard, isn't it? Sometimes you will be seen as quaint, old-fashioned, prudish, closed-minded, archaic. <laughs> Just know for sure, no matter what your path holds, God's word will see you through. The sufficiency of Christ and of his word is something you must grasp as a follower. If you have Jesus, if you have the word of God, no matter what else, it's enough. Remember the Apostle Paul struggling with his thorn? Oh, how he wanted healed. Oh, how he prayed and prayed and prayed. God, take this thorn away from me. And God did not answer his prayer the way he wanted. He was not healed. But to remember the Lord revealed to him and revealed to us in 2 Corinthians 12, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Finally, our writer affirms that God's word is my heritage. Verse 111, your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. You know it's true, dear ones, that you've received so much from God. Life and breath, family, friends, the ability to work that we celebrate here at Labor Day, church family, the beauty and wonder of creation, food and shelter. <clears throat> but one of the most wonderful gifts of God to you is the gift of his word. When you open these pages, you've heard me say, they are warm with the very breath of almighty God. That's what Paul means when he says all scripture is God breathed 
not archaic, not old-fashioned, not a dusty old book, pages that are alive, the writer of Hebrews says, and are warm with God's breath. When you open these pages, they're warm with the very breath of Almighty God. He loves you so much that he left you his word. And do you understand that you'll never be closer to God than you are when you're in his word? Not in worship, not in music, not in creation. You'll never be closer to God than you are when you are in his word. He left you his word. It's your heritage as a child of God. Earlier in this very psalm, 119, we heard in verse 57, you are my inheritance, O Lord. I promised to hold on to your words. So, my dear brothers and sisters, don't ever, ever miss what a rich blessing the word of God is to us. God's word is clarity. It was designed so a child can understand, and yet a scholar can draw new insights for a lifetime. It's amazing. God's word is decision. Each of us must decide as individuals, as couples, as families, as church families, as denominations, will we accept this word without question? Will we trust and obey? God's word is sufficient. Life is hard. Right now is hard. But God's word is sufficient. It's enough to see us through any storm we are facing. And God's word is heritage. God has given you so very much blessings upon blessings every single day. But no gift of God represents a richer heritage for you than God's word warm with his breath. You are never closer to God than when you are in his word. The storm rages. But God's word is the lighthouse. Follow, my dear friends. Follow. Let him be the lamp for your path and the light for your journey. Amen. A number of years ago, two of our Wonderful, more contemporary musicians, Michael W. Smith and Amy Grant, set the verse 105 to, to music. Uh, and we'd like to close with it. The, the chorus is right from the psalm. And then they've added some additional words. Do you know it? It's a beautiful hymn. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and I think I've lost my way, Still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be with me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide and hold me to your side. I will love you to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Great song right from the scriptures. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you again for joining us today. I pray that uh, this message and our worship together was a blessing to you. Uh, again, in Dover, in East Berlin, in Abbottstown, in York, in Dillsburg, again in uh, Florida, and Texas, and in Virginia, and in Indiana, and in Illinois, wherever you're watching from. Thank you. Have a blessed holiday tomorrow and a great week ahead. Uh, we love you, and we look forward to worshiping with you again real soon. God bless you now. So long.